And greetings once again to all of you synth striders and super mutant suiciders of the Commonwealth. We are here today to take a quick look at some of the color correction tools provided by ENB series for Fallout 4. These tools allow you to adjust the game image in ways similar to how images may be adjusted in an image editing program such as Adobe Photoshop. And using these tools, it is very simple to create a stylized game image. For example, to create a nice black and white noir look, or a vintage sepia tone look, or perhaps a more vibrant look, reminiscent of Technicolor or Kodachrome. So, why don't we jump right in and take a look at how to use ENB's color correction tools. As always, we're first going to open our ENB menu with Shift Enter, and we are going to click to show our shader parameters window, and I will just minimize the other two ENB interface menus to make room for our shader parameters. And in this menu, you can see we have a number of options. We will be taking a look at the ENB effect.effects section. And looking in this menu, we can see some of the color correction controls marked by a CC at the beginning of the line. For example, we have gamma, in black, in white, and out black, out white, which are similar to level controls, brightness, contrast and contrast gray level, saturation and desaturate shadows. And you can see we also have some separate color balance tools for shadows versus highlights and an overall color mixer. So first, we are going to try to create a noir-esque black and white game image. And we'll start with what seems like an obvious choice to reduce the saturation to zero. Now, as I do this, you'll notice that instead of only removing color from the image, the image also appears significantly brighter. This is because, as I understand it, ENB's saturation control actually subtracts the color information from the image, thus leaving an overall brighter image. However, we can compensate for this using the gamma and contrast controls. So first, we are going to want to set our gamma to 2. And you'll see that this restores a lot of the definition in the midtones of the image. No longer is everything blown out or overexposed. However, the image still appears to be fairly washed out as we are missing any deep black tones. And this we can adjust for with the contrast control. So here I will set the contrast to 1.5. And with these two simple adjustments, now everything is looking quite nice. We have a high contrast black and white image with clear definition of all elements in the midtones. We can even see some color in the sky and separation with the clouds. And everything has a nice overall balance to it. Now we can further fine tune the black and white image balance by adjusting the contrast gray level. This essentially defines what is considered as medium gray for the contrast effect. By raising this value, you'll see that the image darkens a bit, allowing for even greater definition in the midtones, and making the image feel even a bit more moody, with deeper shadows. And by toggling the mod on and off, it's easy to do a quick comparison. Alright, so what if we want to take things a step further and create a sepia tone look? Again, we are going to open our ENB menu, and now we will look in the color balance area. For a sepia tone look, we really only need to adjust the color balance of the shadows rather than the highlights. And for this exercise, I will raise the red value to 190 and the green value to 160. And we can see that the result is a nice beige sepia color. And let's just close out the menu and see how that looks. Let's take a quick stroll and look around a bit. Not half bad if I do say so myself. We've got a nice, warm, vintage-feeling sepia tone look with a nice cinematic quality to it. For me, it's really fun to see all of the game's visual effects working in a black and white or sepia tone environment. Now, of course, we are not limited to sepia tone, of course. The sky is really the limit in terms of what you can do with these controls. Now let's take a look at trying to adjust the game image in a more subtle fashion. This time, just making some minor adjustments to the overall vibrance of the image, perhaps coming somewhat close to the color characteristics achieved by film techniques such as Kodachrome or Technicolor. First, let's restore our color correction settings to their default values to start with a neutral image. Let's start by first increasing the overall color saturation to 1.5. You'll see as I do this, the colors do become more intense, but the image also appears to be darker overall. 
So let's try to compensate for this with the brightness controls. And let's set this to 1.5 as well. And this helps with the darkness of the image, though it still appears to have too high of a contrast level. So again, let's use the contrast control to compensate for this. Here we will try a value of 0.75. And now you can see as I toggle on and off the effect, the settings impart a nice richness to the overall color palette without being overbearing. Now I'm not trying to say that this effect accurately simulates film techniques such as Kodachrome or Technicolor, as I'm not intimately familiar with how those work, but with the wealth of color correction tools provided by E and B series, I imagine it's possible to fine tune the look of the image to achieve almost any desired result, given enough patience and an inclination to tinkering. So let's take a look at a few comparison shots showing the vanilla image and the new slightly enhanced image. Here you can see it really helps the red color of the blood to pop out. Flesh tones appear a bit more warm. Our light teal car exudes a bit more of its characteristic color. And our red rocket station is just a little bit more red, as seen against the bold blue sky. Now, if you want to play around and really dramatically alter the look and feel of the game image, feel free to experiment with the tools in the channel mixer section, where you can redefine what color components define each color channel, red, green, and blue. And finally, let's take a look at how the first five ENB color correction tools correspond directly to similar tools found within Photoshop. So first off, we have a gamma control, Lots of users may be familiar with this already, where increasing the gamma provides a darker, more saturated game image, and reducing the gamma value produces a lighter, less rich game image. Okay, now let's look at in black and in white. These values determine what color will be output as black. So when left at zero, only true black will be returned as black, but as we raise this value, other colors that are near to black will now be returned as pure black. We're essentially raising the floor of what colors will be returned as black in the game image. And in white works in a similar but inverse way, where when left at one, only true white is returned as white, and when this number is reduced, other colors that are near to white are also returned as pure white. So basically, these are both threshold controls that can be used to specify what qualifies as black and white. In general, you want to be careful when using these tools, as you are effectively reducing the overall dynamic range of the game image. Or put simply, if dark gray now counts as black and light gray now counts as white, then the effective range of the game image is actually only from dark gray to light gray and not from black to white. While the final output still ranges from true black to true white, there are fewer intermediate steps in between to define other colors. Now setting our in controls back to their default values, the out black and out white controls are essentially the other side of the coin. The way that out black works is that any black in the game image will be output as the color specified here. So when left at zero, black is output as black, and when we raise this value, elements that are black are now instead rendered as dark gray, and there is no more true black in the scene. And again, the out white control works in a similar but inverse fashion, where when left at one, white outputs true white, but when we reduce this value, white will instead output a light gray color, and there is no more actual true white in the scene. Now, while this would hardly seem to be a desirable outcome, meaning to not have true white available in the scene, again, other color correction tools can be used to compensate for these settings with the intent of honing in on the overall desired game image. So here, if we reduce out white to 0.8, but then boost the brightness to 1.2, we can restore true white to the scene if desired. Okay, now that we've seen ENB's versions of these controls in game, Let's take a look at the corresponding controls in Photoshop. And here I'm starting with a screen capture of the very same scene from the game. Now the menu we're going to want to look at is under Image, Adjustments, and Levels, as seen here. I'm going to back out of this and first go into full screen mode by hitting the F key twice. And now I'll hit Control L to bring up that same menu. And here in the Levels dialog, you'll see we have a top section called Input Levels, and a bottom section called Output Levels. And that's right, you guessed it, 
These correspond to the in and out tools found in ENB. At the left end of the spectrum is black, and at the right end of the spectrum is white. And as we raise the black in level, as with ENB, we raise the threshold for what dark colors in the scene will be rendered as black. And conversely, if we reduce the white in level, in a similar fashion, we lower the threshold for what bright colors will be rendered as true white. And of course, the output levels work in a similar fashion. If we raise the black output, black is instead rendered as a dark gray color and we lose true black. And if we reduce the white output level, again, we lose true white and white is instead rendered as a very light gray. Now, jumping back up to the input level section, the middle control here is not truly a gamma control, though it functions in a similar but inverse fashion. So here, if we reduce this value, it has a similar effect to increasing the gamma, producing a darker, more rich image. And if we raise the value, this produces a lighter, more washed out looking image. So there we go. All right, gang. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the color correction tools of ENB for Fallout 4. And hopefully you've learned a few techniques to help you fine tune the game image to your own liking. Some of you may have noticed that I'm using a new song for the intro sequence, so let me know your thoughts on that. And I'm also recording this episode with a brand new microphone, which I'll tell you more about in a future episode. As always, I want to thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and be sure to stay tuned for more updates about ENB and other graphics and performance mods for Fallout 4. Catch you next time.